Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake Verdon Tech here. And as you can see from the beginning of this video, I recently took the plunge and decided to get into 3D printing. So in this video, I'm going to be going over a few different things. First off, the overall experience 3D printing as a beginner. I'm going to kind of talk about my experiences. We're going to talk about the setup and within the setup, we're going to talk about our printer, the software we're using, and we're going to talk a little bit about filaments. So starting off with the category, talking about my experiences 3D printing. Um, first off, let's just talk about why I decided to get into 3D printing. And basically it was because there was a few little projects that kind of popped in my head when messing with like Raspberry Pis and a few other things that I really thought a 3D printer would come in handy and kind of bring those projects to life. So from there, I did a little bit of research on 3D printers, what are some really good options in my price range, but my research wasn't all that extensive, as instead I actually went to a really close friend of mine who does quite a bit of 3D printing and asked for his recommendation. So his recommendation was the Creality Ender 3 Pro, and that's what I ended up going with, and it's been a great printer so far. It's a really difficult printer to beat price to performance. Great print quality at a very budget-friendly price. What initially kept me from getting into 3D printing was the overall challenge and learning curve of getting good prints. It seemed very complicated when I'd hear people talk about G-code and other technical terms in the 3D printing world. Strangely, my first prints actually turned out really good, which I wasn't expecting. I believe it was a combination between the advice that my friend had given me from his experience in 3D printing and definitely some luck on my end. As far as the challenges go, assembling the printer wasn't bad and getting that part set up. The menus are really easy to navigate in the Ender 3 Pro. Um, I would say the biggest challenge is probably bed leveling and that's something that a lot of experienced people even talk about in 3D printing. I don't want to say it's the most challenging thing because the concept isn't bad but it's just a very tedious process and getting it perfect is near impossible. The only other challenge I've ran into is I have had the nozzle get kind of clogged so I ended up swapping the nozzle once or twice already. It's kind of been a weekly occurrence so far but it's definitely a good thing to do a thorough maintenance on your printer especially if you're printing quite a bit maybe once a week or so so now that you guys know the printer that i'm running which is the creality ender 3 pro let's talk about the software that i'm using so software for a 3d printer is broken up into two different types of software typically you have a 3d modeling software where you create your 3d models and the second type of software is called a slicer. So the slicer is used to convert your file types from your 3D modeling software into a file type that the 3D printer can actually read, which typically is a .g code file. So the 3D modeling software I'm currently using and I'm probably going to stick with is Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Fusion 360 definitely is one of the more popular 3D modeling softwares for 3D printing probably due to the fact that there's not much setup and settings changes required to start making models for 3D printing. Even though Fusion 360 at a glance can look kind of daunting with all the different functionality, it's actually pretty intuitive and not too hard to pick up. If you've ever spent any amount of time in AutoCAD, all the settings in Fusion 360 will look quite familiar. The first piece of 3D modeling software that I touched for 3D printing is Tinkercad which is a really good piece of software and very user friendly especially for somebody that's never done any 3D modeling before but I felt kind of limited on its functionality so that's why I ended up moving to Fusion 360. For the slicer I'm using Cura which is a extremely popular slicer for 3D printing mostly due to the fact that it's free and has all sorts of functionality in it. I don't really have any experience with other slicers but I really like Cura. It's very easy to use and it still gives you lots of functionality. It's got everything from the printer you're using to the different types of filament. And then once you go into the print settings, it does have some recommended defaults, but you can even go and fine tune those settings even more. So the last component of the 3D printing setup we're gonna talk about is filament. Being a beginner, I haven't messed with too many different types of filament or many different brands. 
So far I've just used mostly PLA and a little bit of PETG. And as far as brands go, I have mostly printed with Overtour, both PLA and PETG filament. And I've messed with a little bit of Sunlu. So the Ender 3 is capable of printing both PLA and PETG. PETG that requires a really high temperature on the Ender 3 isn't recommended just due to the fact that a lot of the parts on the Ender 3 aren't rated for those high temps. Luckily the Overtour PETG has a nozzle temp between 230C and 250C so I usually keep it at the low end right around 230C. So as far as choosing filament for a print I typically choose PLA for more cosmetic or decorative type prints. And then I usually go with PETG if it's some type of attachment or component that might even be used outside or is gonna be in much hotter environments as PLA can get kinda soft if you have an object out in the harsh heat. So going over some of the stuff that I've printed so far, like many that just get into 3D printing, I found myself exploring Thingiverse and downloading all sorts of STL files. Many of them were figures from like Pokemon, different types of video game props, and many small organizational tools like the USB thumb drive holder. So when you first get your 3D printer, I definitely recommend going to a site like Thingiverse or Yegi. This is a good way to get some prints you can start working with and making sure your printer is running well. Probably the best thing to print first is some sort of calibration cube. I ended up going with the 20mm calibration cube just to make sure my bed leveling was okay and my extruder was working fine and all the printer functions were working properly. It wasn't long after a few prints that I decided to start making my own models. Like I mentioned earlier I started off in Tinkercad. The first model I created was this 2.5 inch SSD or mechanical hard drive holder. Pretty simple design but little organizational tools like this are very fulfilling to make and they serve a really good purpose. I also modeled a magazine coupler for CZ Scorpion mags. It is super fulfilling to go from maybe just a notepad and some paper, sketching out a design, then modeling it in a 3D software and watching that print come to life as the printer produces it. And this goes to show everybody that 3D printing isn't just for decorative design and creating things for looks as 3D printing can really produce some really functional items that solve problems. So that's going to wrap up this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it because I could definitely see there being a lot more 3D printing type videos on the channel as I've had a lot of fun with it so far as far as the printing process goes and 3D modeling. So I'll probably be doing some more videos in the future as I gain more experience in the world of 3D printing. Hopefully this video gave you a good idea of what it's like for a beginner to start 3D printing. It's really not as bad and as daunting as it might seem. And the barrier to entry is getting smaller and smaller as we see the technology of 3D printing improve along with the prices continuing to go down for 3D printing equipment. Thanks a bunch for watching guys and I will see you in the next video.